Good morning. We'd like to get this morning's program started. If I can get your attention, please. Okay. <laughs> Michael, you can't hear us? Okay. Good morning, everyone. This is the reunited panel, reunited <laughs> families panel. My name is Arnold Markowitz, in case you forgot from last night. I was actually going to open this morning and say, I'm back. <laughs> this morning we're going to hear from two courageous families who are going to share with you their cult experience and emphasizing the post-cult experience in terms of what it's like to reunite your family that you've had a child in a destructive cult group. On my right, we have the Grosswald family from the New York area. And on my left, I have the Slavin family from Los Angeles. So we got the, sort of the corners of the country covered here. Yeah, I was thinking, it's, uh, it, it's not really like family feud, so. <laughs> but these families are joined together. Paul Grosswald was a 18-year-old college sophomore when he became involved in the Church of Scientology in 1989. He's the younger of two children of Bob and Barbara Grosswald. The family's been very active in the New York area, doing cult education and very active on the uh, Cult Awareness Network, New York, New Jersey Board of Directors. And we're going to start off with the Grosswolds, and I think we're going to ask them to come up, sort of hover around the microphone, and they're going to tell you their story. Thank you. Don't sit down, Arnie. Am I, am I <laughs> That's right. I'll just lean yeah. on you. <laughs> Bob, Bob and I never heard of Dianetics when Paul enthusiastically told us about it in January of 1990. He invited us to visit the center on West 46th Street in New York City. Our discussion with a high-ranking member left us very uncomfortable and dismayed with this organization. We were so upset that when we got home, we started making notes to discuss this with Paul. We advised him to be careful because this may be a scam. He promised to investigate any information critical to the organization. He gave us the Dianetics book to help us better understand it, and it was just other nonsense to us. After Paul joined staff of the Hempstead Center in February of 1990, we started to notice subtle personality changes in him which were of concern to us. Although he had two part-time jobs, he, had al he was always broke and unable to meet his financial obligations. He was very difficult to contact. By the end of February, Bob and I started asking around if anyone knew anything about Dianetics. At this time, we were still unaware that Dianetics and the Church of Scientology were one and the same. At this point, Scientology offered me a wonderful job opportunity. They were going to send me out to California for a full-time job, which means I would have had to drop out of school and quit my job and take a full-time job working for Scientology at an unspecified salary. <laughs> and I was thinking about doing this, and, and I, was, I, hadn't, I wasn't ready to tell my parents about this yet. But I had to come home because L. Ron Hubbard was having a birthday party on March 17th. And you know, they celebrate his birthday every year, even though he's dead. And, uh, I, it, it's a black tie event. I had to wear a tuxedo and everything, and I, I didn't have my tuxedo shoes at school where I was living. I had to come home to get my, my shoes. And so I met my father at the house, and he started asking me questions. You know, why do you need your tuxedo shoes? Why are you going to a birthday party for a dead man? Questions like that. <laughs> and uh, we got into a, an event in, in the course of defending myself. It slipped out that I was thinking of dropping out of school, going out to California. And then we got into a really big fight, and my father flew off the handle. I stormed out of the house. My father immediately picked up the phone, called the Dianetics Center, and said, if my kid drops out of school on Monday, I will be down there with the Attorney General on Tuesday. The Church of Scientology immediately declared me a PTS, potential trouble source. And they started me on a PTS handling, which consists of various mind control techniques, too complicated to detail here. But, but basically, they were implying that my parents were suppressive. And, uh, and that night, I went to Owen Hubbard's birthday party. And I was, I was really disappointed, because, because I expected to have a great time and have a lot of fun. But I was so concerned about the things my father had said earlier that day. And it was, it was, no, it was gnawing at me. It was impossible for me to have a good time, because my, my father had upset me so much. And I couldn't understand what was going on, because my parents had always been very supportive. I couldn't understand why now they were getting so upset. 
Sunday, March 18th, we received a call from the head of the org to discuss the situation. Uh, a heated argument ensued, and I gave logical reasons why my son was not better off leaving school and taking a full-time, less than minimum wage job with no benefits at the org. Bob took over and exchanged words with this woman. Paul was eventually put on the phone and said he'd be home shortly. It was the first time Scientology was ever mentioned to us. When Paul returned home, when Paul returned home that night, we restated all the arguments that Barbara had made with the Scientologist earlier. Paul again agreed to look at any information that was critical about Scientology. He agreed to stay to the end of the semester, and we thought we bought some time. Before Paul left to go back to school, he left us the tape, Can We Ever Be Friends? We found Can We Ever Be Friends to be quite scary. Although the C word is never used, for the first time I suspected that this may be a cult. I may have identified the problem, but now what do we do about it? I became very confused at this point because Scientology told me that this tape would solve all my problems. Play it for my parents and they'll, and they'll feel better and everything's fine. Instead, it made them angrier, so I was, I was very confused. Eleven days later, I received another job offer from Scientology to go out to California, but this time the offer came from the C organization, which is the highest level of Scientology. And after five hours of intense manipulation and mind control, they got me to sign a one billion year employment contract with the C organization. At this point, I stopped going to school. I did not sign out officially. I simply stopped going to classes at this point, And I started sleeping in the Sea Org building every night. And I came to the realization I had to tell my parents about this. And so Scientology rehearsed me all day what to say to my parents and how to say it. All day. And by the time the day was over, they finally let me go home to confront my parents. I arrived home at midnight, and they were sleeping. That very morning, my sister had given me the telephone number for the Cult Awareness Network. I was going to call the next day because, after all, I had plenty of time. Paul wasn't going anywhere until the end of the semester, right? Well, at 12 o'clock, he was home. A very good time to talk about lifelong decisions. <laughs> Barbara and I were devastated. We couldn't believe it. I looked at my son, and he looked like my son. But inside, it sounded like he swallowed the tape. Can we ever be friends? <laughs> But Paul did agree to look at any information that was critical of the group. On Friday, we're lost. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I keep going, right? Yeah. On Friday, March 30th, I called the Cult Awareness Network in New Jersey. It sounded like they may have heard of this organization before. <laughs> they told me to read some books, and they gave me some telephone numbers. The books were hard to find. Plus, I didn't have time to read them or the patients. My son was going to California, but I called all the numbers. On Sunday, April 1st, we were invited to meet a parent of an ex-Scientologist. She was terrific. She still is terrific. She told us about her own experience, briefed us on cults, and how she got her son out 10 years earlier. She gave us some more numbers and piles and piles of information to take home with us to read. That night, we arrived home to find out that Paul had already been there. His stuff was laying all over the house from school. We were disappointed that we missed him. But he was back in about five minutes with a friend from Scientology with more stuff from school. We told the Scientologist to please wait outside while we have a private moment with our son to discuss this lifelong decision. <coughs> Paul again agreed to read anything that was critical about Scientology. He also agreed to spend the day Wednesday with his mother and me to go over and this decision and just to have a day as a family before he went out to California. 